Hello everyone, it's Pete here again with another vlog and today, well it's another fun-filled, festive festival of fun I suppose you could say. What we're going to be doing, we're going to be using two dyes. We're going to be using this lovely branched birch dye, very very popular. We featured it on a Hochanda show a couple of months ago and I also did a demo down at Coleman's Craft Warehouse using this tie and it went down very well so I thought I'd share it with the rest of you. Now we're also using this set, this is the Woodland Deer, uh, three deer, there's mummy, daddy and baby and you've got these lovely detail dies to add detail to the flanks wherever you need it and we're going to use the stag today, that's the one we're going to use but before I do I want to prepare my card. I've got some craft card here. Um, this you can see that I've trimmed around it so that I know where to go uh, with my deer. And I'm going to take this die, this stamp rather. Uh, these are very uh, simple text based stamps and I'm going to use them more for the texture than anything else. And I'll start, I've got two inks here. I've got vintage photo and walnut stain. Now they're very similar. But the vintage, uh, the walnut stain is much darker, whereas the vintage photo has a slight warmth to it. And we will see, hopefully, the difference between the two as we go on. Um, I want to make, I want to stamp down the card, and I want to increase the intensity as I go down. Um, so I'll stamp, I'll over stamp, I'll add more as I go, let's get that there. So you see I'm going lighter now, so that's a second generation stamping. When you stamp once it's very dark, stamp with the same ink without reapplying it, it gets lighter and that's the kind of effect that I want. So let's take this thinner text stamp and place that there. So a bit more detail there, a bit more coming down there. And that's it. Now that's ready to go. So without further ado, I'll place my die on there and I'll get my machine ready. Now today I'm using my fold away machine. It's just as good as the Big Shot but it does have this wonderful facility whereby the arm stays by the machine nice and compact. You can open it up push the wings into place and there we have it. It's exactly the same size as our Big Shot and it cuts just as well. So, which is good news for Big Shot fans. Now, I'm going to place my deer there onto the cutting mat, wind it through. Oh, you see, I didn't screw my handle on. Make sure you screw your handle on at home. If I had a pound for every time I've done that, gone to a demo and had the handle come off in my hand. Anyway, there we have it. Look at that. There's our deer. Isn't that gorgeous? Really, really nice. And that stamping has made a big difference there. Um, it will make an even bigger difference when we see the whole card put together. Now, next up, my branched birch die. Uh, I've cut the craft card to size and I'm going to place that in the center like so. Take my other cutting plate, make my sandwich onto the platform and through the machine, holding my handle firmly in place. Note to self, always screw the handle on Pete. There we are. Now they do say that you should cut these face up. Um, it does help. In truth, if you cut them face up, you get a much cleaner, crisper cut. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I need to speak to an engineer. But uh, trust me, it does make a difference, especially when you're using more detailed dies, as this one is. And you can see there that all those bits lift out beautifully. There, we just pop those final few with my die pick and we're ready to start putting our card together. Okay, we're all set. We've got my craft mat, 
my gesso, which is never really that far away this time of year. I do use an awful lot of white gesso with Christmas crafting. Now, this is indigo blue gesso. It's uh, the reason I favour this one. It has a lot more titanium white pigment in it, so it's very, very opaque, but very white. And I'm just going to take a little out, and again, as I always say, you can always add more. So, I'm going to take my roller, just roll that gesso out there, and I'm take my, my background, which I die cut earlier, I'm going to move from the top down. So, again, more intense at the top, fading out as we go down and die cut. Let's get the rest of that off there. And we'll use a little more to improve the intensity at the top. There we are. Really gives a sense of snowy background, maybe the snow settling against these lovely birches. Also, of course, silver birches are white. Well, silver as the name suggests. So, and towards the base, as we uh, described uh, a couple of weeks ago on an earlier vlog where we worked with silver birches, they do tend to be darker towards the ground. So, we've got that all going on. That's there, ready to go. Um, now I'll take that back ground out and I'm going to use, this as a piece of card, this is the card on which I'm going to stamp my sentiment. So again I want to get a little bit of the gesso on my roller and just work onto that card. I don't want to go too dark, I want, I want the brown of the craft card coming through. So we get a little more. And we're going to take, take most of that off the roller there. Come back onto the card. Make sure, make sure, as I said earlier, that you get that lovely brown craft card showing through. That should be about a bit. You see, because I started off gradually, I've gotten it to the point that's exactly almost where I want it now. If I'd have put too much on the roller, we'd have had a, a right old mess. So, there. That's my background ready to stamp up. Now, if I take that to one side, put my top on the pot. Always try to do this while you're going along, save any spillages. If you're anything like me, now, take that off to the side. That's there. I'm going to take my deer. And remember I said about the, the vintage photo, it, it's, it's much warmer than walnut stain. So I'm going to come from the base again, moving up gradually so it's more intense towards the bottom. I'm going to do the same using my vintage photo with my background. So I just want to go around those edges like so with the vintage photo. Now that's that's going to provide the warmth. Then to help this die cut stand out I'm taking my walnut stain and you notice this time I'm not applying it like this, I'm applying it at an angle. And what that does, it helps when you're using a lot of textures like this and a lot of detail, it helps things stand out. Helps them find their own place in the world as it were. There we are, we'll just apply that to the legs and then coming up again the side on the neck and to the edges of the antlers like that. And that will give it some real punch and to show you, to show you what I mean by that let's take this craft card. And when you think that this was cut from craft card, you can see now it's really standing out where I've inked around the edges and I've also stamped that detail there. Now, while we're talking about stamping, let's get the detail in the silver birch. Now, you know, silver birches, they have 
kind of like dark marks running across the trunks and we're going to replicate that hopefully using this stamp it's the text stamp that we were looking at earlier and this is the horizontal one and I'm going to bring in again my walnut stain this time and then I'm going to stamp over these branches onto the white you'll notice how quickly this gesso dries as well it's gorgeous and this is far more interesting than trying to replicate the effect I'm trying to make it look naturalistic using this text just makes it a little bit more fun and one more shall we Pete yeah why not there you go last one so that's it and that's really now if we put that against the blue you can see there how that text going around really brings it all together now while I've got my uh, stamping hat on I'm going to take this sentiment die it says be merry remember our background I'm going to actually stamp onto that using a brown ink pad there we are that's quite subtle they're sitting in the background let's try it again I want that a bit darker so I'll go back to my walnut stain and try that one how's that that's it that's it because the effect I was going for I didn't want to I didn't want to use black ink because it's too strong it's too punchy um, but that's that's just about where I want it to be so we'll put the tops back on our eggs and it's time to start putting our card together first things first I'm going to trim my sentiment to size using my scissors from the lovely paper sculpting kit these are my Sizzix scissors as you can plainly see and that's just trim that doesn't have to be super accurate that's not the effect that we're going for I'm also going to employ my walnut stain again just around the edge just to help it stand out against the background makes a big big difference very often for the finishing touch I'll use black soot uh, which is obviously a black ink pad but in this context I feel it just be a little bit too heavy so there that's all ready to go in place although I don't know where that place is as yet now before I attach this down I want to get some dimension I want to get a sense of depth I want you to feel as if you're looking into the scene and one of the best ways to do that is by using these 3d foam pads and that is why when I knew I was doing this vlog that is why I've left my nails a little longer than I usually like them to be because I figured that you didn't want to be sitting at home watching me struggling to peel the back of these foam pads. It is not fun. In fact, you know what I do? I think I'll do that off camera. Okay, we're nearly there. There's my ink pads with all the backing taken off. Yeah, it wasn't much fun to watch, so I'm glad I did it the way I did and then I'm going to place this background I've carefully cut this base card to size it's a dark dark brown so let's place that and having you using those foam pads has given me the bit of depth that I'm looking for now my deer is going to slip in between these trees somewhere like that and that's where that inking around the edge has made all the difference and I'm just going to apply just a single foam pad that will be enough to keep my deer in place there and you'll notice as well that I've got the antlers coming off the side I do like I do like doing that with with cards I love that little bit of bit of extra interest makes it more dangerous 
So the Be Merry sentiment again to create that sense of depth. I'm going to want that about there. So two more foam pads and I think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we should be there or thereabouts. Uh, peel those off. Let's get that one out of there. And there it is, ready to go. And you can see that when I put that brown walnut stain ink around the edge. It really has made a difference. It's helped it stand out against the background. So that's it. There is my card. But this is a very versatile die um, and I decided that I was going to do one more using some of the same elements. You can see with this one it's pure white and I've inked it from the base using Broken China Distress Ink, and then the background, which is just a rectangle of card, I've inked it from the top again using the Broken China. And I used Picket Fence White Distress, the can't get my words out today, Distress Spray, and I kind of flicked it all over that background to get the snowy effect. And the star, the, uh, the final touch that is from the Wise Men set, the Tim Holt wise men set. So one beautiful die, two very different cars. So thanks for watching. Uh, I think this is probably my last vlog of the festive season, but we'll be back in the new year with uh, hopefully something a bit different. Thank you again. Um, if you want to find more inspiration, as always, go to our website sizzix.co.uk and click on the blogs. See you again soon. Bye.